Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I will now call this meeting to order. Um, during this declared state of emergency, this meeting will be conducted in accordance with California Government Code Section 54953E as authorized by resolution of the City Council. Please contact city.clerk at mountainview.gov to obtain a copy of the applicable, applicable resolution. Um, all members of the Human Relations Commission will participate in the meeting by video conference with no physical meeting location. As noted on the meeting agenda, members of the public may provide oral public comments during the public comment period for any item by joining the Zoom webinar at mountainview.gov forward slash meeting. Any emails received by 5 p.m. today were forwarded to the commission. Um, I'd like to take a moment to wish a happy Lunar New Year to all those who celebrate it. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the beginning of Black History Month and Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which passed a few weeks ago. Um, our communities of color are an integral part of American life and our life in Mountain View. And I'm so proud to be part of an advisory body and a city that strives to elevate them. And now I will ask the assistant to the city manager to proceed with roll call. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Ball? Here. Commissioner Lakidu? Yeah. Commissioner Solomon? Here. Commissioner Webb? Here. Chair Lynn? Here. Vice Chair Sylvester? Here. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so the next um, part of the agenda is to approve the minutes for the last meeting. Um, the minutes for January 6, 2002 um, have been delivered to the commission members and copies posted on the City Hall Bulletin Board. If there are no corrections or additions, a motion is in order to approve these minutes. Um, does anyone have any comment? Uh, oh, I see um, Commissioner Solomon. Yes, thank you. I just had a clarification question. Um, and I was wondering if the chair and vice chair um, from last meeting are supposed to be referenced throughout the minutes with the titles they had prior to the election, or if their titles are supposed to change in the minutes after the election. Um, their titles will change in the minutes after the election. Okay, because I think, unless I misread it, I think that they did not. Did I get that wrong? I'm just, sorry, I'm just scrolling back. So just to understand the, the thought is that they should change within the same set of minutes for votes or other things that happened after the election. Is that correct? Or only in the subsequent sets of minutes? So after the election, so in the subsequent set of minutes, it reflects their current position. Um, and the from beginning with the February meeting, it'll reflect their everyone's current positions. Okay, but we don't expect it to change oh. within one set of minutes. After Correct. The, okay. Oh, okay. We're not able to do that. So the minutes are generated ah. through a particular government software and the minutes aren't able to change with you can't change the titles within the minutes for different sections of the minutes. Ah, so, okay. thank you. Sorry, Christina. I had first misunderstood and what you said and thought that you were saying that they are supposed to change title within the minutes of the single meeting. No, sorry for the confusion. No, thank you for the explanation. I have therefore no uh, amendments to propose to the minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Solomon. Um, Great, thanks for um, that clarification. Um, we'll move on to oh, oral commission. Excuse still, me, we still Chair Lynn. We still yeah. need a motion and a second and a roll call vote for the minutes. I, I was not present, Sorry. but I'm willing to move to approve them based on nobody giving feedback uh, to change them. So I will make a motion to approve the minutes. I will second that motion. Great, thank you. And I will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Ball? Yes. Commissioner Wikidu? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. 
Vice Chair Lynn. Yes. I'm sorry, oh. Vice Chair Sylvester. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Webb. Yes. Chair Lynn. Yes. Thank you. Great, now we will, I will slowly ease into oral communications from the public. Thanks for everyone for uh, holding back the reins on, on me um, in my first meeting. Um, so this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed to speak on any topic for up to three minutes during this section. State law prohibits the commission from acting on any non-agenda items. Would any member of the public um, like to provide comment on any non-agenda items? I don't see anyone in the public um, attendance box. So um, I'm going to assume that we can close this portion. Um, great. Um, in that case, um, we can move on to unfinished business. And um, the first subcommittee we'll hear from is the Color of Law subcommittee. Um, and the Color of Law subcommittee will now present an oral update. No action will be taken on this item at this time. Um, will Vice Chair Sylvester or Commissioners Solomon and Webb um, like to provide an oral update to the Commission? May I suggest that Vice Chair Sylvester provide an update or at least make the start and Commissioner I was and I can chime in. Um, I was trying to get one of you to do it. <laughs> um, that's quite okay. Um, I, I have the uh, a slight concern that I don't quite remember what we gave in our last update, so hopefully I'm not repetitive. Um, but that's that's okay. Kevin didn't hear any of it, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> Let me start with some of the boring stuff. The boring and important logistics. Um, the event is still still scheduled for May 19th. Um, we do have that plan for being in person, not hybrid, but in person. And we have the Senior Center Reserve. So rad applause to Christina for that. Uh, also super exciting to think that this could actually happen. So holding that thought. Um, I, <laughs> um, well, we have a subcommittee. The, the, our subcommittee has met maybe twice since our last HRC meeting. It feels like twice. Um, we have worked on the name and I might turn to Christina because unfortunately I don't have the new name. We're no longer calling it the color of law. We've actually come up with a working name. Um, Christina or Julie who might have the full name there. <laughs> we went around and around and around about the purpose of this event and what would speak to it. I believe the new title is, let me pull up my notes. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I had it open and then I had to restart my computer because of an issue like one minute before this meeting. And I, so I had the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's it's something along the lines of, and I, I'm sorry, I can't say it for me, I'm confronting the history of racism in housing. Is that correct? Uh, uh, that's, yes, I, I believe so. Then there was a, a, a sort of a subhead uh, about uh, specific specifying that we're talking about Mountain View and about inclusivity. Um, the implication is that we want to keep this positive, it, well, neutral, that we don't want the title to, to suggest that things have always been bad or always been good. We've, uh, we were a little concerned about having language that make sure people understand that we're talking about historical perspective, but also a current and future one. So um, hopefully we nailed that. <laughs> um, with that said, some of the other things that the committee has been working on, um, we have, we've started to formulate sort of subcommittees inside of our subcommittee. Oh my gosh, what are we doing? Um, Julie and I, uh, along with um, for, or Michael Kahn, have, will be starting or have started, I guess, a subcommittee to look at taking in new oral histories. Uh, oral histories, or they may be written histories that people submit on a website. We like that format idea. Um, we'll be meeting tomorrow to look at 
developing um, hopefully a very simple questionnaire to use. So we'll have a lot more to tell you about that um, next month. Uh, so we're looking for people who've lived in Mountain View any, um, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that tomorrow, but any amount of time who've potentially experienced discrimination or diversity inside the city of <clears throat> Mountain View. And sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> See, I needed someone else to talk. Uh, with that said, um, we've, uh, I've also been working with the Mountain View Historical Association on uh, actually a number of topics that interleave back into this one. Um, so with one person from the Mountain View Historical Association, with Michael Kahn from Stanford and myself, we are going to be doing um, a little bit more library research. We talked about that in the past, but we are uh, targeting looking for ads from the 20s, 30s, and 40s that may mention housing in, um, in the Mountain View Los Altos area. So we'll be doing some library research. Um, and then there's a, also the Historical Association is helping all of us uh, by combing through some existing oral history records that they have take they took in the 70s, um, including looking at uh, reading transcripts. So hoping to find stories that may already exist, obviously need some sprucing up with some more current stories, but we've got a host of people working on that, which is really exciting. Um, and lastly, we think we may get some help um, through a connection at Mount View Historical Association with potential facilitators for the facilitated portion of the event. So lots and lots going on, a lot of spinning plates. Um, I can feel the deadline approaching and I'm really excited about that. Um, and Javier, we wanted to get you looped in uh, <laughs> after our last meeting. So if any of that sounds good, let us know what you would like to do. <laughs> well, are we meeting, Are we meet, we're meeting again tomorrow, right? Uh, just the people on the oral history, uh, new oral history subcommittee. And if you're interested in that, by all means, join us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, send it to me because I, I missed the last meeting. I don't know what was going on with my calendar. For cool. the oh, Julie, <laughs> I apologize. Please continue, Javier. No, I said no. That's fine. If you send me that link for the meeting, and I'll make sure. I know it's last minute, but I'll see if my calendar's open and I can jump on. I think it's a three. Um, so. Sorry. <laughs> um, I can send the link to you. I, it'll come from an address you probably won't recognize because it's my work address. Um, so I'll send it out fine. after okay. after this meeting. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we will definitely loop you in on any of that that sounds interesting and other items that sound interesting too. We'll take that more offline. Does anyone have any questions yeah. or comments for us uh, busy bees? Hi there, Rose. I put the title of the oh, event in right. the chat for you. Thank you. Chair Lynn, you have a question, I think? Yeah, um, this sounds like an amazing project. I'm really looking forward to um, the, uh, like seeing all your work um, in May. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering in terms of getting more contemporary um, housing stories, if you might consider revisiting some of the folks that the Safe Parking Committee um, subcommittee uh, last year um, did, because there was quite a large storytelling um, uh, uh, component to that. And, you know, with all the, you know, residents of Mountain View who now dwell in vehicles I, and that being a large issue um, in our community, I thought that might be interesting um, in terms of like bringing it into the present. I like that angle and we could even um, write off our existing research, right? We have stories <laughs> um, and could potentially reference what we already have. Um, yeah, or a deeper dive angle. or yeah. I like that, thank you. Great, thank you. Let me see Commissioner Ball has his hand up as well. Yeah, I wanted to um, kind of suggest a slight modification to the proposed title and with some reasoning. And I am totally fine with rejection of this, but I'd like to kind of give this idea and, and get your sense on it. So um, I'm reading it in the chat as confronting the history of racism in housing, moving toward an inclusive mountain view. And I want to suggest changing slightly to say moving toward a more inclusive mountain view for two reasons. 
One is I think that it might reduce defensiveness among people who feel that we are already inclusive. And second, because I think as currently posed, it makes inclusivity a binary. You are inclusive, you are not inclusive. Whereas I think it is a spectrum. We can always become more inclusive than we are today. Um, we may, may not work on the nuance, but that was my thought. And I wanted to sort of put that out there with the reasoning and then the subcommittee can choose what they wish to do with it. Thank you for that. Um, I think a subcommittee might take that offline to discuss. Um, I do know we were trying to avoid length creep <laughs> in the title. Totally, um, totally. It uh, but uh, with that said, I think that might be a very useful uh, addition or nuance. Maybe we can try to cut another word somewhere else, or we just go with a long title and do that. <laughs> So we, uh, I, I've taken a note for the subcommittee to discuss, and remember there are a bunch of other players involved who also uh, that aren't on this call. I have no investment in that actually happening. It was feedback that I thought might be useful. Well, if it was just me, I'd say yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone? I think I've taken up a lot of the airtime so <laughs> moving on yeah that was that's that's really great and i'm um it's great that you've engaged um so many um other entities um in the and partnered with so many folks out in the community so that's great um there's a there's some time for public comment but as we don't have any folks in the public comment or in the um public waiting area. Um, is it okay, um, Christina, if we skip that portion? So, okay, we'll go ahead and skip that portion and we'll move on to um, the update from the Racial Reconciliation Subcommittee, um, which will now present an oral update. No action will be taken on this item and Commissioners Ball, Nwakidu, and Webb will now provide an oral update. Anyone wants to raise their hand or who would like to go first? Who would like to go first this time? <laughs> Have you? Why don't you go, Nirvana? Um, well, our last meeting, we kind of debriefed on um, our presentation you know, to the commission. And uh, we further just discussed again some of our you know positive experiences. I think we focused more on our needs to kind of move forward with, we didn't really come up with a title yet. That will be for our next meeting, which is next week. Um, so not too much newness to what we shared with you the last time, but mm -hmm. to just present our needs, um, what we're going to be focusing on is we realize that, you know, we've made so much progress. So we're going to try to uh, find a main facilitator. Well, we need a main facilitator and also um, in the format that we're going to be, that we're considering, we would need a strong tech IT person because we're thinking of having breakout rooms um, just from the format in which we saw the candidly speaking group. Uh, we thought that was a, a, you know, an approach that might be good for what we're planning as well. And also get maybe language support because we're going to be having you know, various people from different language groups and things like that. And also, um, and we realized that not just a main facilitator will be needed, but also a facilitator for each of the breakout rooms um, to kind of control the situation and at least give everyone an opportunity to, you know, to speak. And also- Can I, can um, I jump in real quick on that piece? Yes, so, go ahead. So part of the idea with that was we were gonna have the commissioners be the facilitators in the breakout rooms. So we all yeah. made the we we had a discussion about that and we we thought we could handle it as individuals uh, based on our experience in, in in the in candidly so that's that's one of the bigger takeaways so we're hoping that we can get you guys to volunteer yeah so to piggyback on that is we would have some kind of training so the first facilitators would know ahead of time you know how to um lead with within those groups or with the break in the breakout rooms so that's generally what i took up from my notes and then i 
also mentioned at the last meeting that I was going to attend the um, upcoming um, candidly, which I did. And I, I can share on that a little bit, but I'll have someone else add to our last meeting, Kevin or Javier. I can chime in a little bit more. So um, some of the inspiration, we, we also talked a little bit more about which of the inspiration from candidly speaking, we wanted to kind of pull on and how we wanted to structure. So some of the factors that we really liked about it were that um, there were a set of recommended conversation topics posed as questions, but none of them were required. And it was a large enough set that people could kind of pick and choose what they felt comfortable with to create connection. Um, another aspect that we felt was really valuable and key was as the facilitator would kick off by answering a question, and then they would call on someone specifically and ask, would you like to answer the question? And then each person, as they after they answered, would call on the next person with the opportunity to answer it. But you weren't required. If you wanted to pass, you could pass, and that was totally accepted. And the facilitator, it, in a case, would say, okay, you know, let's move on and, and kind of keep that feeling accepted. And it created created this really very nice feeling of a little bit of pull. We want your, to hear your contribution. We want to hear connect with you, what we want to hear about it, but also acceptance that if this is an uncomfortable question or topic for you, you don't have to, it's fine. You can pass, like no pressure. Um, so I think those were some of the things. And you know, there was a sense that you could, you could kind of diverge a little bit, you could go your own way, but there was mm -hmm. the structure of questions to fall back on um, that, that really helped for uncomfortable topics. If, if I can add into that, the, the other piece that we thought was, was beneficial for this event was having the breakout sessions multiple times. So a person could have the first breakout session and not be as comfortable speaking up but if they wanted to in a second breakout session they they could have an opportunity because they already know what's what's expected from the first one so I th that was something that we thought was very beneficial um, and i'm sorry uh commissioner sylvester you have something you want to add or question i think um we were going to have the subcommittee provide uh, an oral update before questions, but happy to, I, I'm comfortable with hand. having it. Yeah. yeah, I'm comfortable with having it um, be sort of interspersed. So um, yeah, Commissioner Sylvester, if you wanna go ahead with your question. Oh, I was just getting in the queue. Oh, okay, out. yeah. Um, okay, so if the subcommittee members um, have anything more to add to their oral updates, um, okay, so I just want to share a little bit because I attended again to just kind of see if I got the same kind of feel and to see what was consistent and what was different. And actually it was I it was much richer. And I, I'm glad I did attend. Mm -hmm. And they had um, a lady named Nicole. She partnered with um, the host this time. And um, the whole process was so beautiful. She got us through just settling ourselves and just taking some, I mean, she just took us through an exercise. The whole, I can't go through it because it's pretty long, um, but it was just coming and being in touch with yourself. And if at the end of the exercise, you didn't feel comfortable staying, you were free to leave. And interestingly, one person did, but it was because of the, and it was very comfortable because of the way she guided us through um, you know, centering ourselves and she used words, she was guiding us through it. It was very comfortable for everyone um, before we had went into the, into the breakout. And she made it clear that this was not a place to have discussions about what was going on out there in society, but this was a place to come and have self-care for yourself. So that was really the goal of Candidly Speaking It's a place of self-care, not about anything else, but also to speak from your own experience. So that was the first time that it was clear to me, um, you know, the goal, because the first time we attended, you know, I didn't get all that, I was just kind of excitement and just kind of being like a, an observer. But this time I was more participatory in the, in the process. I took a lot of notes, but I can't go through all of that. And it's such a place where you could laugh, you could cry, you could express in whatever way your emotion was accepted. 
um, it just made it even so feel so safe. You know, I was like, wow, this is really something, you know, almost like a, a journey you're going through towards healing. And to my surprise, when we all came back after the journal session, to back into the journal session, the, she called three people and I was one of the people, I was taken aback that she called me and through my experience into the different breakout rooms, I was able to really be honest and express some of the things that I was going, past, going on in my life and I actually broke down. And I could tell everybody was just shooting out hearts towards me, you know, mm -hmm. but I didn't see it, but I could feel it. And then she now spoke and said, you know, maybe you can't see, but everyone is just sending out like the emojis right on the screen. And I looked up and I just saw everybody, people sending me notes and, you know, just as if I felt all arms hugging me. And um, after, you know, the whole session ended, I felt so calm. You know, and I felt I could face whatever I sh had shared with them, you know, going forward. And, and I've been able to do that throughout the weeks, you know, since then. So it's a good thing. Yeah, so that's just what I wanted to share. Thank you so much, um, Commissioner Nwakidu. That was so inspiring and it makes me really um, looking forward to um, your subcommittee's um, event as well. Um, is that the um, end of the oral update from the subcommittee? Um, I'll take that as a yes, and um, we'll move on to commission questions. So um, I'll correct myself from before. Um, Vice Chair um, Sylvester, um, we'll go ahead and um, have your questions, please. Um, I am really apologizing if I have forgotten this piece of information. Do you have a date? If you told us last time, I'm so sorry, I, I forgot. <laughs> um, no, we don't have a date yet, but we are looking towards, we said early, late spring, early summer, right? That's yeah. whatever. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, we don't have a date don't yet. <laughs> let you know and next meeting we'll probably try and lock that down but we're trying to come up with a title as well well it's super exciting so i mean your enthusiasm i mean i just want to be there now so thank you for not just what you're doing but the enthusiasm you're you're bringing to it and bringing back to us that's really phenomenal <laughs> thank you I believe we are looking for dates that are a little later than the event the previous so probably June-ish is I think where we were talking. Great, um, and Commissioner Solomon, I see your hand is raised. Yes, um, Commissioner Wokidu, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, uh, it, it would, it, I got just a wonderful sort of feeling just hearing you describing your experience and then that made me think about the potential for helping many other people to have a similar experience. So thank you for that. Um, yes, I, thank I, you. I was, you're welcome. Um, I was wondering if the subcommittee could say a little bit more about, um, please correct me if I misunderstood this, but uh, if the HRC commissioners would be serving as facilitators in breakout groups, that there would be some training for us um, to do that. I mean, I think probably all of us have had some facilitation experience in a variety of contexts. Um, but I mean, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I haven't had facilitation experience in this kind of context. And so if I were to be asked to step into a role of facilitator, I really would want to have some training that would help me feel comfortable that I could help the group to feel comfortable and move forward in their process. So if you could say a little bit more about um, what you see as training opportunities, that would be wonderful. Thank you. So we haven't nailed down exactly how we would do the training, um, but I think what we could potentially do is actually do what would be essentially a, a training session that is a mini breakout room. Just go through the experience that we have envisioned talk through it, have somebody act as that, who has been to one of these, uh, you know, somebody from the subcommittee act as facilitator the first time and then break down. What were we doing? How are we doing it? Why is it different from facilitation? Maybe do a little bit of, of trial and uh, response. 
one of the things we talked about was that you know, the, the level of facilitation we saw in Candidly Speaking was relatively minimal um, because there's the, the key was one, having a more trained facilitator sort of set the stage and expectations up front in the group, and then having kind of the structure of here's the set of questions that we're, we're working from, and here's how we hand, um, you know, having a structured way that you're handing control essentially through. Someone is answering, they pass control to the next person explicitly and kind of going through. It keeps the job of facilitation quite minimal relative to so many types of events or groups that I've facilitated before uh, because it's very structured and there's very limited numbers of options to go off. You just basically have to keep it from getting stuck. Prompt someone, you stop, okay, great, you finished. Um, can you select the next person? That person's not answering very much. If, you, if, if you'd like to pass, it's okay to pass. That's about it. And it was really quite minimal. But I think we could do you know, a practice run and a training, but one of the reasons we felt like it would be reasonable to ask the committee, uh, the commissioners to facilitate is because it felt like that in-room practice was kind of structured down to a pretty minimal facilitation role. Thank you. How about um, you know, if there's a situation in which somebody says things that are hurtful to others or, um, you know, there's some kind of inappropriate behavior, um, it sounds as though you did not experience any of that in the sessions that you attended, but, um, and I would hope that something like that would not happen in an event that we would hold, um, but just something to be aware of if it were to happen, you know, what would be an appropriate way for us to respond. So that's just something that, you know, that, that I would want to feel comfortable that if something were to happen, you know, I, I would know the appropriate course of action. Yeah, I think that's a really good call out. Um, and we should talk about it. I, my immediate instinct is if we have a trained facilitator who was there in the main room, what you do is you call for help. Right. So one of the things they and this this session I attended also was if anybody felt a kind of way was to go back into the general session and the 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 lady Nicole was waiting in the main room to take mm -hmm. over or to address that situation with that person one on one. So there was a safe zone to return to um, if such a thing happened. Um, but also, I like that in the beginning, it was clear what the goal was and to speak from your own experience. So it wasn't, it wasn't there to dismiss anybody else or to attack anybody else or to um, not acknowledge someone else. You know, and she, she come from a place of humility, come from a place of openness, because you don't know who you're going to be with. You're not go you don't know what you're going to hear. And this, I'm repeating exactly what she said. You know, she used these words. So it prepared you to just be open minded. So I think it's same, in the same vein, we could do that, anticipating some things that might be not within our control to have some guidelines and the facilitators should make those clear from the get-go, um, you know, to say, hey, this is why we're here. And this is about healing. This is about hearing every, each other out. This is about compassion. This is about helping each other. I think once you set the mind of people to be open in that way, I think it will reduce people coming with any kind of, you know, and, it, and to any kind of anger, or whatever to express in the smaller groups. And to say, if you wish to talk about something else, you know, you can meet with at least one of us later on, you know, and maybe that will might lead to something else. I think we will, we will have some, some, we should have something like that because we, of course, yeah, we don't know how everyone is going to react you know, in the different group. And because we won't have the opportunity for people to rotate in groups, I think the benefit of candid is, candid is because we could rotate and begin to soften as we met other people. But this is just, we won't be able to do that. You know, and so but we, should we should be able to tell people, look, direct them to, you know, someone else, maybe one of us, if they have something else that they want to share that they feel like they couldn't share in the group, not to cause any disruption, something like that. I, you know, I hope I, I articulated well, but um, what that's what I think. Do you mind if I chime in for a second? Go ahead. Uh, so I think that's a great, great question. Um, and I think we'll, that's something that we're gonna have to definitely discuss in our, in our next meeting 
for the subcommittee so we can kind of hash it out, um, you know, the different scenarios and how are we going to address all of those as and so that we can get you guys comfortable with being a facilitator to handle any kind of situation, whether it, if it's a it's extremely negative one, this is what you do. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure that we address that issue when we come back to the next meeting, we'll have an answer for you, hopefully, or if not, we'll, we'll be able to address it and we know it's on our list, okay? Thank you very much, all of you. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we want to see people go away with, you know, a good experience and, you know, some kind of healing, you know, um, yeah, I think that's the goal at the end of the day. So we'll try our best. And a feeling of connection. I think one of the yes. things we, we identified, the real inspirations behind doing this is how disconnected so many of us feel, especially yeah. during the pandemic. Exactly. Thanks. Um, I, I have a question for the subcommittee. Um, actually, maybe this is more um, for the assistant to the city manager. Um, if we are going to have um, the other commissioners who are not part of the subcommittee be involved with facilitating for this event, um, are there any considerations for Brown Act that we need to uh, take into consideration? Yeah, so um, the any, any civility roundtable like event that the commission puts on um, is a special meeting. And so the Brown Act requirements do not apply to those special meetings. So for commissioners who have been on a com our commission for several years and who remember the before times <laughs> when we had civility roundtables or events before the pandemic, all the commissioners are encouraged to attend. Um, and um, the meeting is noticed um, per the Brown Act, but the Brown Act rules for all the commissioners attending the meeting, you know, are not, are, are taken into consideration, but does not prohibit the commissioners from participating as facilitators, event facilitators, or things like that. So um, it's, the Brown Act is not an issue. Um, and uh, as Javier mentioned, um, the commission, the subcommittee still has quite a bit of work to figure out for the development of the event. Um, and so certainly um, there has been a couple of points that have been brought up that the subcommittee will be working through. And the subcommittee is also exploring um, professional facilitation to help with the facilitation of the event. So that will be something else that the subcommittee will be looking into and confirming in the next hopefully couple of months. Great, thank you. And just as a point of clarification, does that mean that any training that we would have um, or any sort of um, like uh, novice, I guess, training of novice facilitators be occurring like during the, during the event itself since the Brown Act won't, or how does any sort of like prep, preparatory training for the facilitators work? So in the past, um, it has been the practice to hold a pre-event meeting, inviting all of the meeting participants. Sometimes it has been a conference call um, and, um, and we can walk through the agenda for the event and any of the special roles that commissioners may take because um, the subcommittee is asking all the commissioners to potentially serve as a facilitator, we will have to figure out how that um, training might happen. It might um, be a training guide that is written and presented to email to all the facilitators. So it may not be an in-person or Zoom or remote um, training, but to provide you with a script and a guide for um, how to facilitate um, during the event. And then if there were um, particular questions that any commissioners had, you know, I can be a point of contact, commissioners can contact me and um, talk through any questions or issues they may have prior to the event. 
That's that's very helpful. Um, thank you for that. Um, Commissioner Solomon, I saw you raise your hand and then lowered it. Did you have another question? Oh, thank you. I actually had the same question that you were posing, which was, uh, and I appreciated that you brought that up, um, Chair Lynn, about the Brown Act, because then I was thinking too, oh, but what about trainings of facil facilitators? How would we be able to do that? So thank you for addressing that. Yeah, I know it's been a while since we've had a, a CRT event. So um, a lot of us have not had that exposure on um, how that works and how that sort of interfaces with the Brown Act. So that was um, really helpful. And I thank the assistant um, for that background. Um, if there are no other questions from the commission, we can move on to um, public comment. And I see that we have one member of the public um, in the attendee box. So um, if that person would like to um, provide comment on this item, um, please click raise hand and we can um, uh, have you go ahead and um, make your comment and the assistant city manager will display the timer on the screen. Okay, and then um, I don't see a raised hand. Um, so I will move on to the next subcommittee update. Um, the bystander training subcommittee will now present an oral update. No action will be taken on this item. So either me or Vice Chair Sylvester will provide the oral update. Um, Vice Chair Sylvester, do you, I know you already provided an update. I'm happy to. It's all yours. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and provide a brief update. Um, the update is that we haven't had much um, development in this subcommittee. Um, if anything, um, I think Vice Chair Sylvester and I um, uh, had a question for staff about um, sort of next steps because we've done a little bit of engagement of potential like co-sponsors for um, a bystander training and um, sort of who we could engage in terms of running the uh, a training um, for the community. And um, we weren't quite sure if um, next, what next steps are. Is it, are we thinking that um, according to the work plan that it would be next fiscal year that we would provide a training or, um, cause I know we have like civility round table, we have multicultural event, we have, we have a couple of events, um, the racial reconciliation as well um, coming up and just wanna check in on bandwidth and what staff was thinking was aligned with the work plan um, about next steps or if this is going to sort of be the next fiscal year is sort of pulling, pulling it through and um, actually holding a training? Well, I think a part of the work plan was to promote bystander training events and the HRC and the subcommittee did help with promoting an event that was held in the fall that was sponsored by the library. Um, and I'm not aware of any um, additional events that have been scheduled. Um, into Mountain View, but perhaps the subcommittee may want to meet again um, to discuss some of those next steps that you mentioned. And that way, um, I'm not prepared to uh, respond off, on, off the cuff about next steps, but I think it would be appropriate for the subcommittee to meet and to talk about what some of the appropriate next steps would be. Great, yeah, thank you. And, um... I guess the next step will be to meet to talk about next steps then in that case. And um, that's helpful. So I'll, I'll go ahead and move to commission questions. I feel like that sort of was a commission question. Um, if anyone has any, um, if anyone knows of any um, events going on in the community, especially like um, free events or events that are easy to register for that we could help promote, um, please let us know as well. I don't see any hands raised, so I'll move to public comment as well. And if the member of the public on the line wants to provide a comment on the item, please um, press the raise hand button on Zoom. And we'll call you. All right, um, I don't see any hands raised. 
So um, the next section is new business. There is none. So we'll move on to commission and staff comments, um, questions and commission reports. No action will be taken on any questions raised by the commission at this time. Um, so does anyone on the commission have any uh, comments, questions or reports? Yes, I see Commissioner Solomon, you have your hand raised, go ahead. Thank you. Um, couple of items. One is um, from the work plan for fiscal year 2021-2022 that we reviewed, uh, I believe in our previous meeting. Um, I had thought that we were going to have discussion in this meeting about the CDBG home process. And I was just wondering if um, there's a delay in the process or a change in the process or um, for this year. So I, that was one uh, point that I wanted to raise that I was just curious about. Uh, that discussion will come to you next month at the March meeting and the public hearing will be held in April. Ah, okay. So the hearing is in April. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, also, let's see a couple of other things. Um, a message came around about the multicultural festival, um, which I understand will be on um, March 26th. And um, I just wanted to say that it's looking as though, um, given my husband's work schedule, my work schedule, pandemic schedule, and a bunch of other scheduling issues, I may be away um, during that date um, so that we can visit my mom in Connecticut. So I will keep the commission posted. I hope that I will be able to attend, but um, uh, I will let you all know about that. And then uh, let's see, um, I had one other point, I'm just looking at my notes here, that I wanted to um, uh, inform the commission about. So um, uh, Melina Jovanovic from the uh, Santa Clara County Office of In Immigrant Relations reached out to me recently um, because the county is preparing to conduct a countywide immigrant needs and assets assessment and they are working on planning that process. And um, I've actually known Melina for quite some years. Um, but uh, had gotten back in touch with her when we were starting our HRC Immigrant Services Needs and Assets Assessment Project some years ago. And I spoke with her as part of the process of collecting data for that uh, assessment. And um, I did stay in touch with her during the assessment and had sent her our report and recommendation documents as they were ready. And um, so when she reached out to me, um, we did have some email exchange this week um, in which uh, she um, was asking about our instruments. I shared the English language version of the survey that we used. Um, she also asked about any updates from the city in relation to our recommendations. So I understand that um, city staff and in particular Audrey is um, pulling together an update uh, in relation to the recommendations that we had made. And so um, I understand that that'll be available at some point soon, and then that will be shared out with all of us. And I will also um, share it with um, Melina. And um, I do wanna comment that one of our uh, recommendations from the report, it was, let's see, our third recommendation, um, which was on the the, um, in, within the set of recommendations that we felt that the city council should consider prioritizing was to collaborate with nonprofit education and business sectors to continue to reduce the digital divide among immigrant as well as non-immigrant communities in Mountain View. And as I had mentioned in December, the um, County Board of Supervisors is um, working on a project um, that is related to this. And I did just check today and um, there is supposed to be a report out to the County Board of Supervisors in February, at least as of December, there was going to be at some point in February a report out um, on um, uh, research about the possibility of a public, um, 
publicly supported uh, internet service option. So that item, I, I did not see it on the uh, agenda for the February 8th, the Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, uh, and the February, there's gonna be a February 15th meeting as well. And, and that agenda hasn't been posted yet, but I will continue to check the agendas and see if there are any updates, um, since that does seem relevant to our recommendation, as well as I think our broader interest as a, as a commission in this topic. So, uh, so that's my update on that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Solomon. Um, I also see Vice Chair Sylvester's um, hand raised. So go ahead, Vice Chair. Vice Chair. Um, quick question for staff. Um, do we have any updates on filling the uh, um, the vacancy? Uh, I keep seeing it advertised, including on the digital billboard outside of City Hall, and just wondered what's up with that. If we're getting applicants, if there's a deadline for that. I believe the application deadline was extended um, because there are a couple other vacancies on some on, on advisory bodies and um i don't have beyond that i don't have an update on how many applications have been received so um i think it is the desire of the um, council committee who reviews ap applications and makes rec recommendations for appointments to the council to have that process concluded as soon as possible so um hopefully um by the next meeting if not before i'll, I'll have a more detailed update for the commission on on uh, what is the the timing of that um, appointment. Awesome, thank you. I think a few of us have been trying to recruit and everyone always says, well, when will the interviews be or when will, the, when will this actually happen? So <laughs> I've sheepishly told people to apply and, and you know, hope, hope soon, right? <laughs> so that's really helpful to have a little more information. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that topic up, Vice Chair. I had the same question. Um, so uh, yeah, we're all excited to um, fill that vacancy um, and add to our add to our ranks. Um, are there any other comments or questions or reports from the commission members? I don't see any. So um, does the assistant to the city manager have any uh, updates for us? Um, yeah, so just uh, the Commissioner Solomon mentioned it so earlier today, I sent out an email to the Commission, um, just highlighting the fact that the Community Services Department, who will be um, putting on the Multicultural Festival for us this year, has already begun their um, outreach and is soliciting for groups who are interested in performing at the Multicultural Festival on Saturday, March 26th. Um, the event will be held from 11 to 2 p.m. They are also recruiting or soliciting um, any groups or individuals who are interested in um, having a booth during the event. So um, the deadline for applications to submit for the entertainment is March 4th, as well as for the community booth. Oh, I'm sorry, the community booth deadline is March 11th. Um, anyone who is interested in learning more about the event, either to um, perform or have a booth or sponsorship opportunities can visit mountainview.gov forward slash culture fest. So um, fingers crossed that we will have a good community turnout and um, by March 26th, the spring we'll have, people will be in the mood to gather um, outdoors safely um, and celebrate the Mountain View community. We're looking forward to that. Um, and I don't think I have any other, I don't see any other um, hands raised for comments, questions, or reports. So I'll go ahead and move to adjournment. Um, I'll adjourn to the next meeting, regular meeting, sorry, of the HRC, um, scheduled for March 3rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you all next time. Yeah. Carry on. Bye, everyone.